Hey, SoCon Nation, Big George here. Man, I wanted to uh, just take a few minutes uh, out of your day just to talk to you, um, talk to you about courage. Um, man, during the last Global Men's Gathering, um, Cody talked about this beautiful picture of the way that God just, <clears throat> man, he sits by that Christmas tree and he's, he's got such eager anticipation uh, for, for these gifts that he wants to give us, right? Um, and, and I just want to elaborate just a little bit more on that. When, when Cody talked about that, I immediately, uh, I immediately looked into my own life and how many times, how frustrated my heavenly father has to be with me at times. Um, how many times in my life did, uh, did I wake up on Christmas morning and I have just this incredible adopted father who, who promises to take care of me uh, through the good times and through the bad times if all I'll do is cling to him. But instead on, <clears throat> on Christmas morning, I run downstairs. Uh, instead of going to the living room, I go looking into the pantry or, or worse yet, I go into the bathroom or, <clears throat> or, or, or I go to the front door and I'm depending on the UPS guy um, to give me uh, a manufactured version of the gifts that God has just waiting for me to unwrap under the Christmas tree. Um, man, it, and it's, and it's, and it just, it has to rob him of so much joy. Uh, I know now when I, when I celebrate Christmas with my kids and with my family, I'm strategic about the gifts that I buy because I have this intimate relationship with them where I know intrinsically what they, what they really, really want. It doesn't necessarily have to, have to cost a whole lot of money, um, but, uh, but, I, but I do, I, out of the intimacy of the relationship that I have with my kids, I actually strategically place them from, um, from the things that they're least likely to thoroughly enjoy to the to the to the end which which will have the thing that I know that they're just really really wanting because man I just I just want to watch the 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 progression throughout the morning of of just having one gift after another the next better than the last and and just the the look of contentment and the understanding again it's not about money but it's about the intimate relationship that I've developed with my kids um, and they know instantly when they unwrap that gift that I've been listening to them and I've been paying attention to them and I've invested in them um, to the point that I know what's going to um, just make their mornings uh, on that Christmas day and how, how frustrating it must be for the Heavenly Father to have all these gifts Christmas morning laying around the tree um, just with that eager anticipation that only a father can have after after developing over the past year this intimate relationship with your children and knowing intrinsically what they need and knowing what they want and being able to provide that for them but man sometimes we just don't join him around around the tree but one of those gifts that he has that I think for the Soulcon community specifically because of the warrior mindset that we have. Um, I think one of the gifts that he has wrapped up under that Christmas tree is courage. Um, 2 Timothy 1.7 says that he didn't give us a spirit of fear or timidity, uh, um, but, he, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, and courage is one of those gifts that he's just eagerly anticipating us getting a hold of. Um, but unfortunately, I think Christianity went through a, a major uh, a major shift in, in theology and ideology, even especially of the Christian male. There was a, we adopted a a a, a theologically incorrect uh, manner of the gospel, and um, we made it passive. We made it soft. We made it weak. We we filled it with uh, chubby cherubs shooting cute little arrows. Um, and that is just not, that's not my, uh, my understanding of the angelic realm as we know it. Uh, Jesus walking around in Birkenstocks, completely passive uh, and, and uh, I mean, kind to, to everybody that he meets. And, and this, this mentality that we turn the other cheek. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Turning the other cheek, man, I was taught my entire life to turn the other cheek. And it was taught to me in such a passive way that I just couldn't relate to it. I couldn't, I just, that's not the Jesus that I serve. It's not the God that I serve. 
and uh, it created a victim mentality within the body of Christ. But I want to share with you the, the encouragement and the power and the courage that it takes to truly turn the, cheek, turn the other cheek uh, for the war of souls that we are currently in. Man, we, when we are commanded to turn the other cheek in Matthew 5.39, we aren't told this to do this to live a passive or complacent lifestyle. Let me tell you something. This is a warning to tell you, to tell us, the body of Christ, and specifically the warriors uh, for the kingdom, to not be distracted by the attacks that are completely and utterly meaningless and outside of our calling and anointing. If you get, in the, if you get hit in the face, you're not going to die. Yeah, I'm reminded of, of that gif uh, of that, uh, the Asian doctor saying, but did you die? No, no, we didn't. If I'm advancing the line, headed toward an objective on a specific mission, on a specific calling, and I deviate from that mission simply because I've been attacked or simply because I've been hit. Guys, man, th uh, get that. I want this to soak into your minds and into your, into your hearts. Man, that is not necessarily a benchmark or an indication that you're headed in the wrong way. Rather, man, allow that to be an indication that you are headed into the deepest, darkest pits that, the, that, that, that need the light of the gospel shined into it the most desperate. Um, man, I've acted in the past with such cowardice and emotion, and uh, man, there are lives on the line. There are souls that must be saved, and, and man, they are waiting for us to carry the gospel into the darkest of places. And let me tell you something, uh, th this is something that's not, even, that's not even in my notes, but understanding this from a combat mentality, man, if, 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 I, am, if I am building myself up in the word of God and I'm surrounding myself with men that are on the same mission as I am, and I'm, and I'm leaning in on God's word, and I'm arming myself, with with the armor of God every single morning and I'm on my knees and I'm serving my family and I'm serving my community man there's a I can't remember who said it uh, forgive me but uh, man somebody uh, quite accurately said um, higher levels bigger devils and that is such an encouragement to me right because now I know so there's the man there's the um, there's the Stephen Furtick's and there's the Cody Bobes of this world who are battling these giants, these generals, right? And, and man, it's our responsibility to reach down and pull each other up uh, and lift one another up through encouragement and through accountability because what happens is, is, is when I step into my calling and when I step into my anointing and you do the same, we do get to these higher levels with bigger devils and we, and we progress into the, into the ranks of of the darker realm and and what happens is the more people that are focused on the George Schaefer's of this world of the people that that firmly believe that they were put on this earth to fulfill a calling to fulfill a mission to follow through in an anointing the more attention that we grab on an individual basis provides cover and concealment for the brother making the flanking move does that make sense to you? I hope that resonates in you uh, from a strategic standpoint. There are a finite number of enemies that we are coming into contact with. There was a third of the angels that were dismissed from the heavenly realms. Um, so there's a finite number. There is only one devil. And let me tell you, he is, he is, um, he is, there is only one. He is not God's equal. Um, Man, uh, uh, the next time that you say, man, the devil's really coming against me, man, I might call you out on it. You better make sure that it is indeed the the uh, commander in chief of hell's armies that's coming against you. Because if you believe that that the devil is omnipotent and omniscient, man, you've missed it. You you've missed it. Uh, he is not. He does not contain that power. There is only one God, uh, and He is omnipotent and He is omniscient. But that but uh, Lucifer never had that ability. Um, so if I am taking on uh, generals and I'm taking on um, legions uh, myself, man, that that provides me an incredible opportunity. Uh, if you want to equate it to basketball terms, that provides me an incredible opportunity to give you an assist, right? So I've, I've now, um, I've, I've 
gathered all this attention on me, but that gives you plenty of space and opportunity to run in and steal some souls from the pit of hell. So I want to encourage you in that way. And the, the perspective that I want you to, 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 to really sink in, uh, as far as Cody's message, this past Global Men's Gathering of uh, being a hero and not a coward comes from our perspective and this uh, this passive Christianity that... Uh, that took over uh, around the 80s time frame, man. It's it's just it's 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 not accurate, uh, and, and we can we can we can determine that through the life of Christ. Man, Jesus was hunted as a baby. He was left alone in a foreign city as a boy. At a stranger's party, he performed his first miracle. He was tempted by the devil himself. Yes, it was the devil himself for 40 days while in a fasting state. Everywhere he went, he created enemies. He was wrongfully imprisoned. He was beaten. He was scourged. He was forced into hard labor by carrying his own cross after being whipped with a cat of nine tails he was mocked and ridiculed he was stabbed four times and ultimately he died of asphyxiation guys does that sound like a passive uh a passive person to you a complacent person to you because keep in mind he had the ability to call down legions of angels to come to his assistance at any time throughout this process but he had the self-control and the discipline to be the savior that we all needed. Man, let this, let this sink in with you as well. After he dies of, of asphyxiation, he then kicks down the gates of hell, helped himself to the keys of death and the grave, retrieved all of the souls taken hostage to that point by force, then rose again on the third day. And this is, this is the point that I want to make to you, to you fellow warriors, to you uh, special uh, operation soldiers, uh, to you operators out there, and to you trainees alike. John 14, 12 says that whosoever believes in me will do these things, and they will do even greater things than these. And if that doesn't give you, if that doesn't give you, uh, if your adrenaline and your testosterone isn't pumping after hearing that, man, you... You may not even be awake. Uh, man, the, the, tell me that we aren't called to live a life of courage if we are to follow Jesus' example and whoever believes in me will do these things. To include, but not limited to those things that I just listed, but also heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, and cleanse lepers. Let me tell you something. Nobody cares if you're a conqueror in a casual life of, of comfort, caviar, and Corvettes. There's no story there. There's not. Only in the face of adversity can you overcome the impossible, and that's how you become a conqueror. Revelations 12:11 says that we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So today I want to encourage you, what things in your life do you need to open to at what point do you need to go downstairs to the living room, sit down with Abba Father, and open up the gifts of courage? How will you employ that in your life today to overcome the things that you've been keeping in the dark? I want to encourage you to bring these things to the light. Um, share with your SoulCon brothers um, the, the difficulties that, that you're going through because you're going to realize that you're not the only one. And that's how we overcome. It's the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Guys, I love you. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to, uh, to hang out with you over the past uh, 13 and a half minutes or so. Um, good job so far on the SoulCon Challenge. Uh, I would uh, encourage you to dig a little bit deeper today. Uh, do a little bit better today than you did yesterday. Utilize the progress by degrees mentality, and we'll see you next time.